So, this is me. Hi, hello. My name's Lawson Cross, and for those who don't know, I'm music video director. And this is my mate TMB. He's an artist. So, a couple of months ago, TMB actually hit me up to meet up at a cafe to discuss some music video ideas. So, we were sitting down, and TMB hit me with some crazy Hollywood level VFX shot he wanted to do. And I couldn't be more excited. So, after we sat down, TMB started telling me about his idea. And he went on to say this Alright, so, this is my idea. I want to be walking down an aisle with my entire relationship flashing behind me. All the way from when I met this girl in a party to her cheating on me and breaking up and all the messy shit in between. But it's got to be a big dolly out shot where I'm walking towards the camera. It's got to be within 30 seconds to fit the verse. And the only other thing is no cutting. Can you do it? Hearing that, I was like, yeah, um, yeah, that's a fucking cool idea. Jesus, um, I have no idea how I'm gonna pull that off. Yeah, I have just the idea how to pull that off. No worries, I'll get it sorted. I'll hit you back when I got the ideas set. So a shot like this sounds simple enough, right? It's just dude walking towards the camera and then him appearing behind himself in the background. Simple cloning shot, right? But the difference is between a cloning shot and this shot is the camera's moving. When the camera starts moving, you need pixel perfect accuracy to do it. So you may be wondering, yeah, it sounds like you need a robot to do this to be pixel perfect. How the fuck is a human supposed to do this? And you're right, you can't do it by yourself. You do need a robot. And the thing is, yeah, they do exist. They're real, they're cine bots, and they're very expensive. And they can operate a camera to within pixel precision, time and time again, countless shots in a row. And that precision is expensive. And yeah, you may be wondering, how the fuck did I pull this off for 150 bucks? And that's what this video is about. In order to make this camera move in the exact same way to get the shot upwards of like 30 times these takes, I needed to figure out these three things. And that was, is it repeatable? Can I get the camera to be stable? And third and most importantly, can I make the timing down to the second? Or preferably, perfect. Which is a big fucking ask. So I went home and I thought, I need to see if this is even worth my time. Should I even bother? In order to do so, I needed a proof of concept. To do that, I grabbed my housemate Kellum. I was like, hey, stand here in the hallway. I'm just gonna go eat all with my camera and don't worry about it. So the idea was if I could cut Kellum out and put three of him in the scene and make it look semi possible, that's a proof of concept right there. And this is how it turned out. You can see it's pretty fucking sloppy, but it proves I can repeat the same process and get the same subject within the frame. That's the proof of concept. I was on something, I, looks bad, I know. The stability shit, the timing shit, but subject is there, they're cloned. The idea, fell. So after this, what's the next step? And the thing I needed to fix next, I thought I could tackle was the stability. So I got Ben, and this is Ben. He's my mate, and he produces the music videos with me. So we went down to a camera warehouse hire, and we got this, a Wally Dolly. We took it home, set it up, and thought, hey, is this Wally Dolly good enough to even get the camera stable? And can we fit the amount of people within the frame without it looking too goofy? So, once again, got Callum, and we got an inflatable dummy from a board game of ours and just stuck it in the fridge, as you do. So we set it up, got Ben there, and this was him rapping. And yeah, goofy, but premise works. Camera can be moved, you know, relatively stably. We can fit everybody in frame. We can do it all within 30 seconds. What's next? And then, next step, time. How can we get this camera to move the exact same path within the exact same time frame, time and time again, for roughly 30 takes? Now, this was plaguing us from the start. We were freaked out how the fuck we're gonna actually manage to do this. I was coming up with like stupid ideas with Ben saying like, Oh, you know, let's just fucking get some engineering students or hire someone to build a little remote control PCB board with a motor and it can move the dolly wheels and we can get it in the time frame. No, that was over-engineered and stupid. We kept coming up with these crazy ideas. Like, for example, I think Ben came up with the idea of let's just, you know, add a shit ton of weight to it. We'll get a bungee cord and then we'll strap the bungee cord to another weight and then the residual tension should move the exact weight pretty much the same way each time. And yeah, we shot that down too. And we had a bunch of stupid ideas. And then I came up with the idea of, why not just do it by hand? That sounds simple, right? Just move the camera the exact same way within like millimeters every time, 30 times in a row. So my idea was beeping. I thought I'd go into the track, cut out TMB's verse. 
did that, and then for each one of the plot points that we wanted to show on screen, I would put a beep sound effect. But this is what I came up with. This little animation to get the idea across. Now, how do those beeps correlate with timing in the real world? Now, the thing is, I thought, well, if I just subdivide the length of the dolly track that I know doesn't change by the amount of beeps, which is I think five or six, I should be able to hit the beeps every time on the dolly track. Now, the thing is, yeah, that doesn't sound very precise, and it's not. So the other idea was brute force. And the idea was, if I didn't get it right, I'd just keep doing it because one of them would have had to be good enough. So all I had to do was not be perfect for 30, I had to be perfect for four seconds. And now that's doable. It's hard to fuck up movement at the same pace for four seconds. And that's what I thought. So this was the day, shoot day. We had no idea if this was gonna actually work. We were all shit scared if it was gonna work or not. But we trusted in the process. You know, we did the tests, the proof of concept worked, the tests worked, the fucking animation worked, everything worked piece by piece. The only thing we didn't know that would work was putting it all together in a cohesive unit. That was the hard part. So now it's shoot day, we needed to figure out something quite important and that was the blocking. That's another thing we didn't get to test out because we never had the right amount of people. We tested it with Ben and the dummy and Callum. Yeah, people could fit in frame. Now this is a different location. We needed to figure out, can we fit everybody in frame? So what do you do? You get everyone to stand in and this is that. This is what that looked like. This is the first test of what it actually turned out like. So we did that and then we revised it a bit, got people spread out and then we put tape markers down. Now we know exactly where each of these scenes take place, exactly where the main scene takes place. Now the only thing left to do was film. So that's a wrap. We finished up the shot and that was it. We couldn't really do anything else other than that than just cross our fingers and hope we didn't fuck it up horribly. So now it was on to the editing time. Now this was the most annoying process because I had to pick from 60 shots. 60, yeah. Which of the fucking six ones I needed. And that was a massive pain in the ass. After a few hours, I found the right ones I wanted. And now it was on to the After Effects portion and doing the actual VFX. Now this was the big part. This was the moment where I could tell if it worked. So I quickly drew up some garbage mats around all the clips and then threw them on top of the main tank. And to my surprise, it fucking worked. It worked. And they all fit together. It just looked good. The only difference was the lighting and the color. I just had to go in and then individually color correct it all. And after that, it just, it just worked. All I had to do was feather the masks. And they, yeah, they're a bit janky, but it worked. It just needed some love. I couldn't have been more happy. But now it's on to the hardest part. And that was the masking. Now this isn't hard to do physically, but if you aren't aware, masking is the bane of any VFX artist's existence. It is pain. Now, originally when I was doing this, Rotobrush 2 just got released and I was really keen to use it. Now, it sounds like I'm about to complain and <laughs> you'd be right because it took me, for whatever reason, 10 hours to do the first Rotobrush on the main take. Now that wasn't just a rough rotor brush, that wasn't a rough mask, that was like pixel perfect on all the hair, the skin, the fingers, everything, all the very annoying details. I was thinking, you know, like, what do I do? This is just far too long to, you know, comfortably edit with, like, what do I do? And then I remembered, I heard of this thing recently called Runway ML, and a bunch of YouTubers were talking about this, it's this AI tool to do masking and green screen. I thought, you know, it's worth a crack, it, it might be stupid good. So what I did, I uploaded this first clip of TMB to the server. I clicked once and it masked him. Everything, fingers, hair, clothes, jeans, tears off the end of his jeans, like everything, like stupid good. And I was like, this is fucked. And I went through and I watched it and it masked the entire clip, all 30 seconds, I, pain free. I didn't have to do any work. All I had to do was just fix up the edges. And it took me 30 minutes. What took me 10 hours now took me 30 minutes. And that was it, I knew that was the thing, but that was a critical time saver. And the biggest part of all is it ran beautifully. The computer wasn't chugging along to, you know, like, <coughs> oh, you know, the rotor brush, it's hurting my soul. No, the computer didn't care. The computer was like, yeah, alpha channel. This isn't hard for me. It was just running smoothly. It gave me the time to give the clips the love and care they needed to look good. Only thing left to do was do the VFX, add the cool transitions, 
add the lighting elements and all that crazy shit, we're done. So, for the actual VFX, I chose this. Now this, it, you might think looks familiar. And that's because if you watched Harry Potter as a kid, you probably recognize it. Because I was thinking, I didn't want to do the fade in and out. I want to do something interesting where they whoosh in and out from one side to the other. And I thought, I remember the Harry Potter teleportation spell, that looked kind of cool. Shit, that's actually really easy. I'll just do that. All I did, you know, duplicate the layer three times, cut, have them cut out, puppet to it, spin it around, make it look all wibbly wobbly, and then go across the other side of the screen, make them flash around a bit. And yeah, boom, add some lighting effects, done. That's it. That was the VFX shot. This is what it all came out to. So that was it. That was the entire VFX Hollywood level shot breakdown for how I managed to do this. Now, this was really cool. I really enjoyed being able to do this because it gave us the ability to, you know, tell an entire story within 30 seconds in a cool, creative way and a visually unique way. And a way that you can usually only see in a high-end Hollywood film, we did it for cheap. But yeah, as for the cost, the dolly and all the shop bags we hired out for it was roughly around 50 bucks. And then the warehouse we got was about 100. So all in all, this shop was pretty fucking cheap compared to, you know, the thousands of dollars you use for a robot arm. And, you know, we didn't have that. All we had was a lot of grit, determination, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. But in the end of the day, we had a really cool idea. And I'm really happy to share that. Big thanks to Alex and Ben for coming out and helping. And big thanks to Callum as well. And really big thanks to TMB for having a sick idea. And I really liked working on it. So yeah, that's about it. If you want to follow some more behind the scenes stuff or look at some photography or other music video stuff, feel free to follow me here on Instagram. And... If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. But yeah, main takeaway from this is if you're a filmmaker, don't feel discouraged for not having access to huge budgets and Hollywood gear. Don't feel so bad on yourself. All it takes is the right amount of grit, determination, stupidity, and the right ideas, and you can get 95% of the way there. Because 95% of the way there is better than not trying at all. And look, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. So don't be afraid to fail and fail fast. And that's what it's all about. It's all about problem solving, having fun along the way, and just figuring shit out. So yeah, I implore you to go out, fuck around, have some fun, and let me know how it goes, because I sure had a great time. Hope you do too. Anyway, I'm out.